Hi everyone, we are some of LVR. This is an in-depth tutorial on how to make a spherical video with the Ricoh Theta. This is our little camera right here. We're gonna start with how to turn it on. So you'll notice on the side of the Ricoh that there are two buttons. The lower button is for the Wi-Fi, but it also helps you turn it into video mode. So if you hold down the button and then turn on the camera, keeping the lower button held down, you'll notice that the blue light on the top starts to blink. Then you can let both go. That blue light is how you know that it's in video mode. So the blue light on the front of the camera when it's in video mode means that I am not recording. <laughs> you'll notice that when I turn it on, it makes that noise. That's the video recording. Ta-da! Yay, and recording! And also, there's no light. It's great. The one thing you have to know about this camera is it will only record for three minutes. It stops at three minutes exactly. Uh, so just, you know, be aware of that. It does not make a noise when it stops recording video. It just stops. All right, one thing you need to keep in mind when recording is that there's going to be a big stitch line around the camera on the sides where the lenses aren't. Objects far away won't have noticeable stitch lines, but as you move something closer to the side of the camera, the stitch line is going to be a lot more noticeable. So right now, there's going to be a stitch line right in the middle of my face. When I hold a spherical camera, the person that's inside, you, you sort of have to think of this as like a person's head. When there's a person inside of there, they have a, hor a horizon, right? So one of the great things about the Ricoh Theta is that if I turn my hand this way, the gyroscope inside of the camera is like, oh, oh, you move the camera. I now still think that this is down. It always aligns with gravity, but you do kind of have to rotate it a little bit slowly in order to get like a smooth gyroscopic transition. And these cameras have a measly storage capacity of only four gigabytes. The battery life is likely going to outlast all the footage that you take. Yeah, I found it's about like 40 minutes. Yeah, 45 minutes. Yeah. Staying on top of your footage is really important. Unlike with a flat camera where like you can just record for hours and hours. Okay. Okay, what's else on a giant sure, list? Sure. Red light, turn off. Okay, so one of the main errors with these cameras is that the little red light on the front of the camera will just, yeah, the, that will turn red. And you won't always know why. It usually just means I am processing a thing. Sometimes you can just leave it, but often like you just need to turn the camera off and back on in order to get it to go away. Exposure stuff. Oh, that's a really good one. <laughs> okay, so you have two lenses. When you're only exposing for one lens, you get to pick which, what exposure it's going to be. But there's no picking exposure on this. So if you are facing a window and you are in a room, there's going to be really high contrast. And I would highly recommend turning the camera perpendicular to the high contrast, meaning that no lens is directly facing a bright light so that both lenses get sort of a more even exposure. What's your favorite thing you've shot? Ooh, scooter cam would be the thing. Scooter cam, yeah. I'd put one of these guys on a selfie stick, tuck it into a backpack sticking out, and then you ride around San Francisco. A lot of fun. You get to see all the people staring at me. <laughs> You're like, what is that crazy camera? That scooter cam. <laughs> My favorite thing has got to be like sticking it inside of tiny things and making you feel like a tiny person. So now on to uploading. You've got your footage on your camera. And for uploading right now, it's going to be very different from PC and Mac. So we're going to show those two things separately. About uploading on a PC is that the connector that you're going to use to upload the footage has to be connected to the motherboard. You can't go through a USB hub. You can't go through like the fancy hub on the front of my computer. None of that works. You have to use um, directly on the motherboard. USB mini connector. And when you're using a PC, it's great. You open it. You have your Ricoh Theta here. You have your you know, your hard drive, and your hard drive is full of videos. It's very simple. It's like any other file that you would do on a PC. Hey, Elijah, do you want to go to the hard that is uploading yeah. a thing Let's on try it on cable? A Macintosh. All right, so I've got this Rico plugged into my computer, and the Photos app in Yosemite has been extra nice and opened itself for me. So I'm going to select all the videos. I'm going to click delete items after import, check that little box, and then click import all new videos. Because you can't access it as a normal hard drive, you have to click that button, otherwise there, there's no way to delete the videos. Importing. 10 minutes later. All our files have imported. So this, it says no photos right now because this is still in the Rego Theta, and I checked delete items after import. Our albums. Oh, 
there we are now. Yeah. Last import album. Oh right, these are what the um, Rico Theta videos look like straight out of the camera. This is not watchable in spherical format yet. We need to stitch it and stuff. So, Elijah, let's say you want to just get these files out of iTunes so that you can say, you know, stitch them or do anything. Oh boy, that's a tricky problem because we can't just copy those into our finder for us to utilize. I'm going to go into my pictures and I'm going to select photos library. I'm going to right click on it and show, show package, package contents. contents. I'm going to go right into the folder that's called masters. And from here you're going to get some directories that have your files stored in a uh, month and day and year. So I'm going to click through these until I find one for today. There it is. Ah, look at all these. Look at all those files. There they are. So we can access our files by doing that whole show package content deal. But now, how do we stitch these files so that instead of seeing these two raw lenses, they're in echo rectangular format? So we're going to find our Rico Theta app, which you will have to get. And this works only with the Rico Theta camera. And if you have the Rico Theta camera, you want this app. That's how you're going to stitch these into one thing. It's just available on their website. Yep. Um, Rico Theta app. And I need my stuff. And this can do stuff in batches. So I'm going to go to my files. I'm going to select all of these, drag them in. Do I want to convert all of these videos into a playable format? Well, yes, I would. Where do I want to put them? I don't want to put them back into the iPhoto library. I'm going to put them in my documents, Rico Theta folder, start. Now this is going to just run for a while. Yay. So this is a real advantage of the Rico Theta camera is that it has its own stitching software that knows that there's two lenses in this configuration and it's just going to automatically stitch everything. We don't have to import 12 different GoPros worth of footage and then arrange and stitch them by hand in an expensive piece of software. Okay, so now we're converting different batches of files on three different computers at once. I think I'm winning. You are definitely winning because you know why you're winning? Because I'm not using a laptop. Ugh. Look at all those graphics cards. This is why you're winning. Because of cheating. That's why you're winning. <laughs> Actually, it's probably not even the graphics card. It's more the fact that I have dual socket motherboard. <laughs> and like all the RAM. Now all those files, instead of looking like two lenses, instead look like this in echo rectangular format. If you are good with the video taken one upload raw, you can just send it to YouTube and it will all be great. But if you want to do any editing, then follow these steps. Open Premiere or your preferred editing program. Anything special you need to do when making the new project? No, just browse to your making a tutorial video folder and name it something like tutorial video. Then you just go to your bin and you go to the folder and you're like, okay, I am going to list them. You go into the this drop down over here and you go to details and then you list by type. Then I would recommend making a new folder called raw and putting all of the MOVs, but not the MP4s. When, they're, when the videos are converted, they get converted into MP4s. So the MOVs are the raw footage with two lenses. That you do not want to edit, so just stick them in the raw folder. And then the MP4s are the echo rectangular, ready to edit. Stick them stitch. in here. So I just recommend like dragging one into the sequence folder and it will automatically make a one by two sequence that is the right size for the, the for the Rico Theta video. Yeah, whenever I drag it in, it's like, would you like to change sequence setting? And I'm like, oh, change it to the video I just dragged in because yeah. Because if it's not grab... exactly this, it won't work when you put it into YouTube. So it's very basic, right? Like the, the stuff that you can do on a spherical video is very similar to the stuff that you can do on flat video. Look, now it's two pieces and stick another piece in the middle. You can cross dissolve, you can do color correction. If people tell you that you can't edit a, a spherical video, you should just tell them to go away. This cut, like, yes, that can be disorienting. Like for example, if you're cutting between two scenes and you want the people in the scene to generally be in the same place, you're gonna have to change the the spherical orientation of the second image, right? So, oh, I really like where everyone is in this. Like, I'm in the middle and Vi's over here and Elijah's over here. So let's try and do that same thing with this second video. So you just go into the effects folder and you find offset. Offset is the best effect for making spherical video. So mm -hmm. 
you have it on here, you go into effect controls, and in effect controls there's this horizontal um, value right here. You'll see here that it wraps the video seamlessly around so that you can reposition where any of it is. Mm -hmm. um, so this is what it looked like originally, again, and I'm just going to slide it over until I'm basically in the middle, Elijah's basically on the right, and Elijah's basically on the left. You're still going to see a cut between these two, but we're in basically the same place in the video. So it just makes the person watching the video doesn't seem like the room suddenly shifted. This is just a regular vlog, basically. I have a little bit of voiceover in the beginning, over this footage, we cut to the airplane, talk to the camera, we cut to, you know, the office, and we... These are just hard cuts, there's no problem with them. So what it's doing here is I'm feathering the edges of one video which is on top of another video. In the final spherical video the effect of this is that you look one way you're gonna see Emily and Nagel sitting on one end of the concert hall and then when you turn around it's like you're zoomed up to the organ and you're on the other end of the co concert hall. Oh I'm sitting magically in the same place where I was in the previous one. Yeah that was on purpose so I wanted to connect the place where Emily was sitting in this video in the two view to the place where Emily is sitting in the other piece of footage to just create some visual continuity. And then I start crossfading in at the bottom. I feather in, and that's just from a different piece of footage where the where there's ukuleles on the floor. So it's easy to fade between parts of footage as long as they're still the full rectangle of equirectangular footage. You can half and half, you can do pieces here and here. What you can't really do is try and like slide this down here and this up here, they really need to stay aligned vertically. They need The top is special, it needs to be at the top. The bottom is special, it needs to be at the bottom. And if you're going to be moving to the side, you can do that, but this is going to be a hard line, so if you want it to wrap, you have to do offset. So I have this video, now I want to export it. What do I do? Control M if you're on PC. Um, and Unfortunately, you're not, you can't just match the sequence settings uh, off of a Rico Theta video because it gives you these horrid black lines um, at the top and the bottom. So you just want to make sure that this is actually unchecked and that you're in the H.264 encoding format and that you have audio and video checked. Obviously, you need to put an output name, but you need to check in the uh, output and the source sequence. You have to basically manually check that they're similar. So you make sure that it's 15 frames per second. While technically the, the camera shoots slightly lower than that, it's totally fine to export like that. And you need to make sure that this number set and this number set are exactly the same because otherwise you're going to get um, a black border on one of the edges or a black border around the top and the bottom, which in spherical video looks like a hole. How would I manually change those settings that they don't match? So you would go into video and you would uh, uncheck any box where the two settings didn't match and you would manually change, uh, like if you needed to change the width. This sometimes works. Matching the source instead of matching the sequence settings can work. And we'll export it. You're eating the loading bar. No, 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 no. So then we go into the folder where you saved it, which is right here. And unfortunately, once you've edited it, it no longer knows that it's a Rico Theta spherical video. So what you need to do is go, uh, there'll be a link that you can go to for this app. There is this special little 360 video metadata tool right here. Um, it's very simple. All you do is you find the video that you need to put the spherical metadata on. Ours happens to be in this tutorial folder, and it's right here, it's called Tutorial MP4. And you open it, and all, you don't do anything except push, inject, and save. And it will go to the same one that you just had open, and I highly recommend naming it something like the exact same thing the previous video was named, plus data, or metadata, or whatever it helps you remember what it is. And then you save it and the file is saved, and then it appears in your folder over here as whatever you named it. This is a very important step. If you don't do this, the players won't recognize it as spherical video. At least the YouTube player. Yeah, the YouTube player. Our player will recognize it without the data. And you just upload it like you would upload any normal video. Select, or actually we can just drag it over. You just drag the tutorial video with the data into your thing, and you let it upload. And it's as simple as that. When the when it's completely uploaded and done processing, it, the um, it 
sometimes it takes a little while so you may not immediately see spherical results this is how the youtube player will look it will have this uh, gray dot up here that lets you move around with your um mouse or you can use the wasd keys to move it manually now these videos can also be watched uh, for example uh, on the native U youtube app on ios you'll notice that as i move the uh, gyroscope in the camera around that the video this is an interesting attempt to <laughs> film spherical video you'll notice that the the view in the camera port changes um, there is no currently no cardboard support on the ios uh, on ios but there is on the android Good. All right, we're about to leave cut our do we have a google cardboard we have a wearality so now you can look around we can see an andrea so the metadata app thing is just for YouTube because right now YouTube doesn't know whether a video you upload is spherical or not. This is the Theta app. Just drag and drop a video, a spherical video, and um, you can navigate with the arrow keys and look around. So what if you want to watch in a VR headset? The Theta app won't do it. Right now, the YouTube app won't do it either. It'll do it in the cardboard app on Android, but not in the um, Oculus. So we're going to plug in our headset and um, we're going to use Firefox Nightly. It's the Mozilla Firefox experimental thing. And go to mosvr.com if you want to know how to set up Firefox Nightly to work on your VR headset. Um, and we're at the Ella VR player. This is our player that Andrea wrote for spherical videos. And so now Elijah's seeing what you see. So he's seeing this video in the Oculus Rift headset. And you don't need a VR headset to play a spherical video in the Elevier player. It works with a headset. It also works with keyboard controls out of the headset. Any conclusion, concluding thoughts you want to, or just say anything at the end of the video? This is the easy version. How do we possibly explain how much easier that is than dealing with, like, this stitching and dealing with GoPros and... So that's our tutorial on how to make spherical video with the Rico Theta and upload it to YouTube or play it on the LVR player. If you have any questions, you can find us on Twitter or leave them in the comments below and we'll try to get to everyone. Um, have fun making spherical video!